to know what are your thoughts um, regarding how the procedure for registration of service marks would be? Would it still be the same way we register trademarks or would it be different? No, it will be pretty much the same. Um, the Trademarks Act hasn't changed. So so, um, so the process will still be the same. If you, um, uh, if you, there was a time when NTN had, uh, had its, they had a strap line. I can't remember what it was called now. It always sounded like a strap line. Anyway, the, there was a, there was a, a promo they were running and they, they had a name and they, it, 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 the, there was a logo, there was a device that went with it. So it would still be the same. You'd take out the mark. Um, you'd fill the forms, you'd put your bromide, uh, or that's the artwork, on, and and it would go through examination, go through, um, if it, if your skills are hard, or go to publication. If anyone thinks that that name is similar to theirs, then it will go through opposition. And um, if it's able to surmount that, then it will it'll get registered. So that, that's the way it should be. It doesn't require any special process as, as far as I understand it. So are there any limitations or challenges you foresee with the implementation of this act as it relates to trigger? No, I think I think the big the the, the most um, significant challenge is what do you do with the pre um, the, the uh, 2007 regulations on down to try explaining to excuse me what do you do with those ones uh, and that that's what to me that's the greatest challenge. Um, going forward, it will be um, the, the act has set out a procedure, and you simply follow it. And um, yeah, that, that's what I think. Okay, so I, I'm going to draw up a rough scenario here. So, what happens when you have a proprietor who was registered, who registered his service mark prior to this act, yeah. and um, you have? a new proprietor seeking to register his service mark based on this act. So you have two conflicting interests, mm -hmm. similar service marks, similar design and all of that. How do you think priority will rank uh, uh, over uh, the act? Interesting question. I, I think that, uh, so let me put it this way. Um, under the act, um, and on the you know and whole bunch of different provisions, he, 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 an unregistered trademark, for example, is entitled to protection. An unregistered trademark is entitled to protection. Um, a, a, for example, a, a well-known mark that may not be registered in Nigeria is entitled to protection. So what should really happen is that when the new entity is trying to register the trademark, the old entity which is uh, which uh, which is there can jump in and say, well, trademark registrar, um, remember that in 2007 I registered this particular trademark. Well, the BFA came along. I, I don't know what its status is, but clearly I have priority. And on that basis of which the trademark registry could decide this, this this matter in favor of the prior registrant under the 2007 regulations would be um, would be on the basis of use if that that. Uh, pre-registered or 2007 registered um, proprietor it has in fact been using that same trademark in this country, then he can, you know, the registry will be forced to recognize the uh, previous use, prior use, and say, you know what, we'll still give priority to this entity, which registered all that, in, you know, somewhat dubious old regulations, but which has been using those reg using the, uh, the mark all this while. So a combination of these factors, I think, would ultimately um, end up giving priority to the two the, 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 the registrant prior on type. So would you say that businesses and brands have um, an increased duty to be aware and pay attention to at least what goes on in the registry now because we may have we may see an increase in people trying to register um, other service marks based on this PFA, do you think they have an increased duty to protect their interests by? Well, absolutely. They, 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 uh, they, um, I mean, how, how do you say it in law? Uh, equity aids the vigilant. So you just have to be on, on top of your game, particularly with the with the um, with the way the 
to the extent that there were no transitional provisions to claw back the previous registrations, it becomes incumbent on every on every um, every proprietor to stay vigilant and and um, watch out for those types of things. And some new registrant try to um, you know take the benefit of their of their trademark. Sometimes it's not even a question of someone trying to take advantage of of theirs. It's just that they they just someone doesn't know and and you just need to defend what's yours. So the, the power registrant, as I had said before, needs to be proactive. Uh, and actually, before anybody shows up, go to the registry and say, look, I have this registration. What's the way forward? I don't want anyone to come in and then begin to tell me that theirs is as priority over mine. So that's the way I would like to, I think we should deal with it. So I'm sure for everyday brands and businesses out there, they may not necessarily be familiar with the process um, because doesn't mean that they have to stay at the registry every day or go every day to check and make sure what's the process like in trying to safeguard your um your rights to that mark and stay proactive and stay vigilant yeah well the ideal scenario i mean uh, the ideal scenario is that you um hire um a competent IP firm to conduct watch services for you you give them a list of the marks that you are watching out for. And they in turn will keep their they they have the the skill set and the manpower. You know, they, they constantly actually do surveillance in, in the registry as a matter of course, because they're they're, you know, constantly filing and, and they can see stuff coming out. So they, they would be your first line of defense. You they'd also um take the benefit of uh, what do you call it? When trademark owners show, they then review those trademarks with your mark in at the back of their minds. Sorry, not at the back of their minds, actually at the forefront of their minds. When they're going through trademark owners to, sh- to, be, to be sure that that trademark, uh, which they want to protect, has not been sought after by someone else. And the whole thing about the trademark owner is that when you now notice that there's someone trying to take the benefit of your trademark, what you then need to do is then trigger opposition proceedings against the trademark, against that prospective, you know, uh, application. And you'd be saying to the trademark registrar, listen, this mark is mine. I had a registration in 2007. Uh, even if you say that it's not a valid registration, well, I've been using the mark in, in these shows ever since. So therefore, I deserve protection of the law. And, and, and the registry should, would jump in at that point. The other layer, the other layer of protection, or you know, that could, or that way of being proactive, if you have uh, such a such a such a trademark, would be to um, um, engage watch services. So there are some international entities that actually run these uh, watch services across the continent, in fact, across the globe. So you could also procure them if you have the financial muscle. But hiring counsel in in countries should do the trick. So basically, the safest way to safeguard your trademark and your rights or service marks is to build a formidable team of watchdogs, basically. Um, but any last words regarding um, the BSA? Anything you'd like businesses, brands, proprietors out there to know and how they can um, benefit, actually truly benefit uh, from this act and in the process of doing their business in Nigeria? No, I, I mean, I think the BFA is stuck in the right direction. There's no doubt about it. It's not, um, sorry to sound like a bit of a wet blanket, but it's not, it's not a uh, utopia, but it's a, it's a major step in the right direction. And we must commend the, the, the those who, you know, saw it through. And, uh, and they, did a, they did a fantastic job in that sense. Um, but maybe my last words would just be, be proactive. There's no other way for proprietors to deal with the issues uh, out there, be proactive, defend your intellectual property. And maybe, particularly for Nigerian entrepreneurs, come up with a product that really creates value. Once you create real value, uh, by creating value, I mean giving benefit to people. Once the, once the product creates real value, whether, whether it's an invisible service or it's an actual physical product, once it creates real value, then the intellectual property or the trademark now becomes doubly relevant. 
because people are going to always want to, you know, plug in and take the benefit of that intellectual property. So, it and then the other reason why value is so important, you know, creating true value is important, is that the world is a lot more becoming a global market. So, you have competing products from all over the world. So, you need to measure up to the international standard. And one of the ways to ensure that you are up to standard is that you, you, you've you properly taken care of your intellectual property. Pharmaceuticals, those in FMG businesses as food and fa fast moving goods and, and, and all of those types of product. They, this is their bread and butter. They're, 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 and, and in fact, there are instances where intellectual property is in fact seen as one of the you know invisible assets of a company and, and adds on to the balance book just because there's a constant flow of great products coming through, and there's a value that the that the public ascribe to those products that's over and above what the shelf price is of the product. Anyway, I hope that um, uh, you know how that's useful. So thank you very much, sir, for sharing your thoughts with us on this very very topical issue. And to everyone watching, thanks for joining. Please let us know if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you.